Hello everyone, welcome back to IZTWF uh, YouTube channel. Just received a nice uh, packet from, uh, well, it's coming from the United States, but it took uh, some time to arrive. Uh, I've just got um, all the nice uh, Data IO 2100 uh, device programmer which is not working uh, and I plan to repair this uh, very nice program I probably will make uh, a video about it but since the stuff is coming uh, from the United States uh, Adrian Black uh, Adrian Digital Basement Channel just sent me a little present so let's see what we have here so little package if I can woohoo you know what is that this is a 1982 Commodore 64 board well, of course, it's missing something here. Ceramic RAM. This is uh, the very first Commodore 64 board revision. Uh, beautiful. Th that was something I was looking for since a uh, very, very long time. So, thank you, Adrian. That's very appreciated. Very appreciated. Um, Yes, we'll see in this video uh, if I can make this ball work again. And by the way, he sent me also the original bracket with the square hole in, uh, in the power input position, which was used in the Silver Label uh, um, Common 64. And you sent me some drums and a nice uh, big uh, uh, NTSC version chip which will fit perfectly in this port. Um, of course, I will leave uh, this port as NTSC. So, let's have a first look at what uh, is missing and needs to be done um, on this C64. And there is obviously missing the input power connector here and I check it in my parts and I don't have one so this must be uh, ordered or I could buy locally but as you may know in this period is uh, everything is shut down in Italy and we don't currently know uh, when things will get uh, back to normal so this is a major problem until I get a replacement for this. Then, well, the bracket is missing here, but uh, Adrian was just very kind and sent me a uh, replacement one. And there is a missing uh, heat sink in this 7805, which is really needed because uh, it gets very hot during the work of this 64 but that's not a problem then there is a missing uh, big uh, chip but uh, uh, again Adrian sent me a replacement one and so this is not a problem then missing seed chip uh, well I have to find one but the machine can work without one so it's uh, a delayed problem in this, car, in this uh, uh, moment. Then there is a missing uh, U17, which should be the PLA, also missing socket, uh, but probably the PLA was soldered in. Um, there is a, a very good job removing the old chip. Uh, I cannot see any broken trays, no damaged pads, no nothing. So. I will install a socket, of course. Missing the CPU. 
uh, I don't have a spare uh, 6510 but I have um, an 8500 which is the newer version uh, which is kind of working it, it can let the machine booting uh, but has a heat related problem but that would be enough to first troubleshooting then missing character ROM and I have plenty of these uh, uh, I don't I don't think I have uh, left um, ROMs from 1982 I had a few uh, but I used it on uh, some other repairs but no problem the, the character ROM is uh, always the same no, that would not, would not be a problem missing uh, to 6526 um, I guess I have just two in uh, in my last part so uh, that would be uh, I, I will use them in uh, this machine of course and here is missing u8 and i think it's a 7406 that has been removed again i will install a socket here and this seems to be a good job too um, no problem at all so let's see on the other side what we find okay also here seems in uh, good shape decent good shape there are some flux residues uh, where the power connector has been removed but uh, we'll clean this then reworked chips also has uh, some flux uh, but the job was done properly I will just clean a bit of this flux it shouldn't cause any problem but uh, well, I will clean it anyway since I have then this is the missing PLA also here seems a good job no problems I can see but I will of course will watch with a magnifying glass and see if I spot some evident problems Replaced uh, 6526, also flux residues, but the job seems properly done. So, very good. Also, connectors are very shiny, no problem at all. This is another replaced chip here. Uh, well, overall, I think it's uh, a decent job. Also, here there is uh, the missing. Uh, 7406 and um, I don't see any problem here so let's start installing the missing parts and see what we get okay we are in the middle of June and finally I could uh, get an order from DigiKey delivered here so with this quite big order I can probably uh, get on with many other uh, projects that have uh, been stuck for forever now <laughs> now what I'm interested for is uh, this kind of connector here yeah this box which is uh, uh, these seven hole seven pin female uh, connector uh, DIN1 which is uh, uh, the power connector for the C64 uh, silver label PCB that I'm repairing well what's the problem the problem is that uh, on the later revisions they used uh, this 7 pin connector but with a shorter uh, spacing between the front uh, ground uh, pins so this one which is from another C64 won't fit on the uh, silver label uh, um, PCB. So what I had is uh, an eight, uh, an eight pin female. This one with a larger spacing, so I can, uh, I could verify that this one fits. But of course, this is an extra uh, pin in the middle. I didn't want to have a not original look on the silver label PCB. So I found this one on DigiKey which has the correct spacing it is a 7 7 pin female which is the correct one but has this metal uh, tab on the front 
but this one I think uh, I can remove it is uh, just uh, I think I can remove it and install it in the C64 motherboard the silver label one so let's see if my assumption is correct Okay, so I put back all the missing chips, uh, the 6526, uh, connector wrongs, uh, uh, this marginal CPU, but I uh, just traded the uh, working 6510 uh, for some RAM modules uh, for the Tandy uh, M100 that Adrian needed, um, so I got a working CPU in exchange for that uh, RAM module. Uh, missing chips have been replaced now I have a PLA also working one I took it from another board where I put a Soviet replacement uh, a PLA that I've just programmed I have still the missing seed chip but that would be missing for a while I guess so the VIC chip is in place too so I can power on Oh wow, <laughs> that's working, yeah, yes, that's working fine, actually. So it's time to, I didn't think it was so easy, I mean, <laughs> just replacing uh, chips. Uh, so it's time to connect uh, 
the keyboard, uh, the disk drive, and see what happens. So for the last test with this machine, I installed a, a SID chip and uh, playing uh, my favorite game. Um, I've not been able to obtain a good picture anywhere with this uh, NTSC board. This is a broadcast monitor, um, Trinitron Sony broadcast monitor. Um, but the picture has some ghosting. Uh, also here is noticeable. Also here, so I don't know if it's the board or NTSC. This is the only NTSC C64 that I have, so I cannot make uh, comparisons. But anyway, this game was uh, kind of broken in PAL machines. He had a book that uh, rendered it uh, very difficult to finish in, in PAL machines and to obtain uh, high scores. So I will enjoy playing on an NTSC machine where the bug doesn't exist. And I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Well, not my best record, but for the first time I play on an NTSC board, it's okay, I guess.